Bon, qu'est-ce que le capitaine Ce n'est pas un soldat. C'est un poisson avec des écailles, des grandes écailles, vraiment dorées, au lever du soleil. Et puis c'est une merveille le soir au coucher du soleil. People, they always talk about the sun of Africa, the colors of the sun that you would not see elsewhere. And I think it's true. The bush is what it is. You know, there's no change in it. It's always going to be somewhere where you can go and see something for the first time. Pretty much as raw and edgy as the African wilderness can be in today's modern world. The greatest motivation for being a fishing guide has been the access it gives you to living in the bush. Bonjour, bonjour. One of the first things one notices when you arrive on the riverbank here is the hippo. Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> Cameroon was never really on the radar for me, actually. We have Ed Truter to thank them. I mean, he spent quite a few years working and living in West Africa. If I rip these pants, I'm going to have a freaking problem. Oh, fuck it. And uh, he's been on sort of a quest to find a relatively still intact West African Nile perch fishery. I had heard of big Nile perch out of the Faro. I had seen photographs of, of fish caught on hook and line. But the fish that really caught my attention, the locals who found it told me it was 1.8 meters in length. It clocked a 100 kg scale. So it's obviously an incredibly productive river that can produce fish of that magnitude. There seem to be a lot of small perch, like in the shallows, which is very cool, because I'm sure sooner or later we're going to get a much bigger fish. The local word for Nile perch is Capitan, and it's not hard to imagine why. It's a very authoritative title, and yeah, this is definitely the, the king out in these waters. What's interesting about that name is it doesn't matter where you are in Francophone Africa, that's the name. So it's unusual for a colloquial fish name to carry across so many countries. Two lines caught him, one from this side, other one answering from this side. The beauty of the night is that it's always different. And at night, you can lose everything you know. Everything is new. The sounds are not the same. There's a crocodile. You approach this river, and you know that hippos, they are just here, and crocs, they're here too. And you can hear them sometimes, but you don't see them. That's the thing about the night experience of fly fishing. The normal night sounds of Cameroon reminds you of just how, how special and remote this place we are. One of the things that we, we quickly learned about perch in the Faro is that they fed at very specific windows. Your odds of hooking into a fish are very good. Um, your odds of landing a fish, they're stacked against you heavily. And they've got their caves that they run into, they can run you over rocks and cut you off oyster beds. I lost a 50 pounder this morning and it's just a little 10, 12 pounder. Oh my God! For my first real taste of uh, the raw power of a, of a Cameroonian Nile perch. A Nile perch looks like a dinosaur. Eyes on top of the head, big underslung jaw, big dorsal spikes folds all the way down perfectly into its body like that. Look at this tail here. 
that's what makes him so powerful. Hell of a thing. <laughs> if we're all standing here in the dark, we can't see a thing, then the next second you can hear someone say, yeah, I'm on. Oh. I need to light something. You are gonna have to go, eh? Go on. Fuck. Chew hooked to it is quite obviously a monster. I got a I got a hiding and it's very sad. Big egg shake, boom boom. Boom. C'est la vie. There's a herd of elephants, about 30 animals a day. There's plenty of water to fish, so you can leave some of the hippo spots to the hippo. Walking and, and fishing uh, the Faroe River, you can encounter many, many species. There's three species of tiger fish. The most interesting and the most common one is what's known as Hydrocinus brevis. In English, the Sahelian tiger fish. A few days ago, Stu was looking for fish in the pools with his drone, and he spotted a tiger fish that was as long as half a hippo. I mean, that's just mind blowing. We're talking about a tiger fish there of over a meter. The locals, they call it the gasa gasa. Gasa gasa means feather, feather, when they refer to this fly fishing technique. What the perch do is they create a, a negative pressure inside the mouth and what's called the buckle cavity. Any fish nearby just gets sucked in. I hooked a, a 14 pound perch that got eaten whole and then spat out by another perch. So he's come out a little bit um, worse for wear, but still ready to, to be sent back in. You know, one name that keeps coming up is Maro de Croco. Incredibly deep. We actually have a cracking fishing session as it gets light. Second cast of the day, this beautiful little perch. Been waiting for a big bite today. Very happy. Stu's hooking a couple of perch. I hook into a really good tiger fish that just gives me an absolute bee sting, you know, just gives me a really good rev. We spotted some poachers this morning, uh, wildlife poachers. Just a reminder that uh, these areas are under constant threat. Many people that have lived many, many years in Africa, they're not optimistic anymore. And I can understand that, but I don't want to accept. Protected areas that are threatened, is, it's not a new story in Africa. This one actually is a number of mosquito nets stitched together. There's almost nothing that goes through this mesh. All the invertebrates, there's no fish that's too small. Just across the river on the other side is designated as a national park, which you know, should be the highest level of protection. But you know, we've seen a stream of people coming through this area heading for the national park. Over my visits to Cameroon, I've had numerous encounters with really large fish. And of course, I've always had in my mind, you know, this fish that clocked the 100 kilo scale. It's run under a ledge. This fish is still running, eh? He's just... There's more than the first run now. The whole time the fish was running, and very quickly it went into my backing, and remarkably not cutting. This fish is still pulling line, lots of line. And I got into the water a little bit and tried to see if we could unhook this line. Chaos, this is weird new territory here. We've just got another fly line rigged up and we're going to try and do a, a never before done switch over, I think. And then run downstream and then I'd try fly fish for Ed's 
line. Oh, okay, okay. Five or six attempts, I managed to hook the line. Now it gets interesting. Stu was handlining the fish. And then I was holding his fly line in my hands with the fish. And I cut the line there, and then I took Stu's rod, and I tied the end of my backing to the end of his fly line. Are you ready? Let's go. And then we resumed the fight. Got under, it's coming here. On the shooting head. That was when I really felt the weight of the fish. Oh, shit. Ah, what the fuck? My God! Oh, my God! I need never catch another fish in my life. 70 plus 98. The scale of that fish was incredible. Paradigms are blasted open. This is like a fish of a different proportion than anyone was thinking. Relative to where it came out of, it's almost otherworldly. There you go, my girl. This is the part of the world where this species evolved. You know, we're very, very privileged and hopefully we can do nothing but good for the place. If I need to isolate only one passion, I should admit it's not about hunting, it's not about fishing. I think it's about nature.